<laughs> I, brought, I brought my own dice. Come on, man. It sounds like a great time for a jarring tonal shift. What do you think, Nicole? Yeah. Not my favorite uh, kind of tone. You... Let's talk about alcoholism. Oh, cool. Oh. Let's go. That's like my favorite thing. Hell yeah. This isn't a bit. I genuinely really enjoy talking about <laughs> alcoholism. It's great. Go. Great. Your favorite part of it. Oh, because me, I'm the drunk. Yeah, cool. Well, um, we all are, but you're the only one who put it on Twitter, so. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was so, like, my alcoholism is kind of weird. Like, I, um, because to be honest, it's always really been public. Um, because, like, the last day I drank, yeah, I did. Yeah, some of my alcoholism has been very public. <laughs> Go on. Well, yeah, so, like, the last, you know, I'll, you'll level with you, like, the last six months of my drinking time, um, the vast majority of it was on air at my job. Um, you know, I was working at X99 in Calgary. Um, worked there for, you know, five years. Because you you call you're in Calgary, right? Yep, I listen to X929. But, like, just, you know, for, for context. So, like, Nicole, you can kind of back this up. Like, X as a station is very, like, it's very friendly and very, very human. Like, it tries really hard to, like, let the announcers do whatever. Yeah. Um, and, like, I took that to the extreme while also being a raging alcoholic. So, for, like, the last six months, like, I was drunk on air most nights because um, I was just fucking miserable. I didn't like anything, really. And, uh, yeah, it all kind of came, you know, kind of came crashing down because I, I remember it was the night that the Raptors won their championship. Uh, I uh, I was hosting an event for a friend of mine, um, and there was, like, this after party. And I the, the event ended at 3. My show started at 6. I remember the event ending. I remember going to the after party, and then everything's just gone. And I got blackout at, like, 5 o'clock on a... Thursday afternoon um, went to work I have vague memories of doing the show um, I don't know how I got home to be honest I, th I think I may have gotten an Uber or something I'm not super sure that's responsible you know, I, I, just, I, looked at, I just looked at my receipts and I had like beer delivered to the station and I had an Uber receipt so I was like put those two together um, and then yeah the next morning I was on my way to my therapist's office and um, I get a text from my coworker being like, hey, are, were you drunk on air last night? And I was like, no, I'd never do that. My head hurts and I threw up already today, but I wasn't drunk on air. Um, and yeah, I, I was sitting at the um, at an intersection. We had this thing where you can like pull up your, your, your show from your phone. And I pulled up one of the breaks uh, that I did. Uh, and I couldn't listen to it. I still haven't listened to it, um, but I saw that it was three and a half minutes long. Um, and my longest breaks were usually like a minute tops, maybe 90 seconds. So I was like, yeah, oh, you, I was very drunk on air last night. So I, I was really lucky because I'm on my way to my therapist's office anyway. And so I get to my therapist's office. I'm seeing her for like four years um, at the time. And I just like broke down. I was like, I think I'm a drunk. I was drunk at work. I've been drunk at work a lot all the time. Um, so you didn't get in trouble with work. You just like, oh no, no, I, I, I got another text from my boss while I was in therapy, being like, hey, you need to come to the station now. We need to talk. Mm. And so I go from therapy to my boss's office. I fucking break down, being like, yep, hey, I'm not coming to work today. I don't know if I'm coming to work next week. I gotta go find a rehab center. I gotta go figure my shit out, and I gotta not be a, a drunk mess. Um, and apparently saying that like, Hey, I'm not coming to work and I need to go get help. Uh, I have, I have found out after the fact that probably saved my job. Um, cause if I had been obstinate or fought it or, or whatever, I probably would have been, I would have been fired with cause for sure. So, you know, for me, my alcoholism has always, always been really public. Um, I, cause I was gone. I got suspended for a few weeks and the audience didn't was curious as to where I went. And a few people had been like, had noticed and like wrote on the Facebook page, like Graham sounded pretty drunk. And then he was gone for a few weeks. What's going on? So, um, yeah, I kept everything kind of under wraps until like a year later. Um, after I got, had been sober for a year, uh, I did a video on, on the X99 page saying, Hey, like I've just hit one year sobriety a year ago. I was drunk as fuck on air. <laughs> And um, here's what happened. And so that was in 
I hit. Well, I was at one year sober in 2020 of June, and so like early pandemic, everyone's still like scared, and um, I lost my job a week later from a COVID layoff, which just sucks. That's how the business goes. You know, after that, like I had, I, I got into recovery and um, stayed sober and haven't had a haven't had a relapse, which is pretty cool. So. I was checking my app the other day. I think in like nine days I'll have been sober for a thousand, which is pretty cool. Oh, which is pretty exciting. You have an oh, app? Really, uh, really, yeah, yeah, I have a sobriety app that that I uh, that I There's use. There's an app for fucking everything. That's awesome. Oh, it's great. Oh man, I have apps to find like different recovery speakers. Yeah, I mean, even, like since then I've I've you know I've done talks at school assemblies on mental health. I've been a, a men- I didn't counter. I was a mental health public speaker for a long time. Uh, I would go to schools with counter board of education and talk about my mental health because i was a depressed sack of shit for a long time and still kind of am um so yeah like talking about mental health and talking about anxiety or depression or whatever has always been like a thing i've done and then when it was super apparent that i was a drunk it was just easy to kind of keep going like that so like i i have a more clarity of where my fuck ups are as a person right. and i have clarity of where I can go wrong, and when I know that I am, I'm, 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 I'm falling into addictive behaviors, and and how to get myself out of them, and the people I can reach out to, if I want to, and I have a structure in which I can kind of live my life and structure my life that I won't be a that I won't be a drunk piece of shit. I'll just be a regular piece of shit who's sober, uh, <laughs> which is cool. Oh and, yeah, you're absolutely in good company here. And like, also, I never, I don't get hangovers, and that's cool. Like, oh my god, being like again, you have to understand for someone who drank like every day for years, like waking up and like having a functioning brain, like you know, God willing, I'll make it to to three years sober in June. But like, that still blows my mind when I like wake up on a Saturday and be like, fuck, I can take my dog to the park and not throw up. <laughs> 